What if I told you the second coming of Jesus is closer than you think? Imagine a world where prophecies unfold right before our eyes, manifesting the divine teachings we've held onto for centuries. The second coming isn't just a religious concept. It's a spiritual awakening, a cosmic event that will redefine our understanding of existence. So as we venture into this profound topic, let's ask ourselves, what signs should we be looking for? To understand the second coming, we must delve into the prophecies. The Bible, an ancient tome filled with wisdom and narratives, contains numerous prophecies that speak of the second coming of Jesus. These prophecies, scattered throughout both the Old and New Testaments, are interpreted by scholars and theologians to piece together a picture of what the future may hold. The book of Revelation, one of the most prophetic books in the New Testament, provides a detailed account of the end times and the second coming of Jesus. In it, the Apostle John describes visions of cataclysmic events, the rise of the Antichrist, and ultimately, the return of Jesus Christ. This prophecy is often interpreted as a metaphorical depiction of the struggle between good and evil, with the second coming of Jesus symbolizing the ultimate triumph of good. The book of Matthew too holds significant prophecies. Jesus himself speaks of his return in the 24th chapter. He describes a time of great tribulation, followed by signs in the heavens, and then his return in glory. Many scholars interpret these prophecies as a warning to remain vigilant and faithful, even in the face of adversity. Now the intriguing part is how these prophecies relate to current world events. Many theologians and scholars see correlations between the descriptions in these prophecies and the upheavals we are seeing in our world today. Natural disasters, wars, and moral decay often mirror the tribulation described in the Bible, leading some to believe that these could be the birth pains of the impending second coming. However, it's important to remember that these interpretations vary widely, and not all scholars agree on the specifics. Some view these prophecies more symbolically, while others take a more literal approach. The beauty of these prophecies lies in their depth and complexity, inviting endless discussion and interpretation. So we find ourselves in a fascinating dance of interpretation and speculation, a dance that has been going on for centuries and continues to this day. Are these prophecies coming true in front of our eyes? That, dear listeners, is a question for each of us to ponder. Let's examine the signs of the times. The Bible, a guiding light for many, has spoken about certain signs that will precede the second coming. As we journey through our world today, it seems these signs are becoming more and more evident. The first sign is a rise in false prophets and deceivers, those who claim to carry the truth but instead sow seeds of confusion and discord. Today we see countless individuals claiming to have the answers, spreading misinformation and leading people astray. Next the Bible speaks of wars and rumors of wars. Our current era is not short of conflicts with nations pitted against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. The sounds of strife are all too familiar, echoing across continents. The third sign is the increase in natural disasters. Earthquakes, famines and pestilences are occurring with increasing frequency and intensity. Catastrophes previously considered rare have become commonplace, shaking our world to its very core. Fourthly, the Bible mentions the persecution of those who believe. Across the globe we see an upsurge in intolerance with believers facing harassment, discrimination and even violence for their faith. Lastly, the Bible highlights a general decline in moral standards. Today we witness a society where values such as honesty, respect and kindness are often sidelined in favor of self-interest. This moral decay is a stark sign of the times we live in. These signs as described in the Bible are not just isolated events. They are interconnected, each one feeding into the other, creating a domino effect that escalates the intensity of the times we are living in. However, it's crucial to remember that these signs are not meant to incite fear, but to prepare us. They are reminders to stay vigilant, to hold on to faith, and to live in alignment with the values we hold dear. So, as we look around and see these signs unfolding, we are left with a question to ponder. Are these signs merely coincidences, or are they heralding the second coming? What will the second coming look like? A question that has intrigued humanity across the centuries. The Bible provides us with a vivid portrayal of this momentous event, painting a picture that's both awe-inspiring and thought-provoking. The Book of Revelation, in its poetic and symbolic language, describes the second coming as a grand spectacle. Jesus, referred to as the Lamb of God, is depicted returning to earth on a white horse, symbolizing victory and purity. Accompanied by the armies of heaven, he comes to judge and wage war against injustice and evil. 
But it's not just about the grandeur. The second coming also signifies a time of great upheaval. The Bible speaks of the sun turning black, the moon turning red and stars falling from the sky. It tells of the heavens receding like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island being removed from its place. This cataclysmic imagery embodies the transformative power of this event. In this transformative phase, humanity isn't left unaffected. The Bible assures us that the dead in Christ will rise first, and those who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. It's a momentous reunion, a promise of life beyond our mortal existence. The second coming also carries a message of accountability. It's a time when every deed, every word, every thought will be brought into the light. Jesus will separate the righteous from the unrighteous, the sheep from the goats. It's a call for introspection, for us to consider our actions and their consequences. In the midst of these extraordinary events, the Bible assures us that there will be comfort too. Behold I am making all things new, declares the one seated on the throne. The promise of a new heaven and a new earth, free from sorrow and death, gives us hope in the face of the unknown. So, as we contemplate the second coming, we're left with a thought-provoking question. Are we prepared for such an event? It's not just about the awe-inspiring spectacle, but also about the introspection it invites, the transformation it promises, and the hope it kindles. How imminent is the second coming? We've embarked on a journey exploring the prophecies, the signs of times, and the concept of the second coming. Now we find ourselves at the precipice of a great question. How imminent is the second coming? Imminence. It's a word that carries weight and urgency. It implies an event that's not merely in the future, but right at our doorstep. When we talk about the second coming of Jesus, we often hear this word, but why? Why do many believe that this prophesied event is closer than ever? To answer this, we must first understand what the concept of imminence means in this context. It suggests an event that could occur at any moment, something that is always looming over the horizon. It's like a ticking clock, each tick bringing us closer to the moment when time runs out. Many believe that the second coming is imminent because of the signs we see around us. We've already discussed some of these signs in our previous scenes. The world seems to be in a state of constant turmoil and change, and many interpret these as signs of the nearing end times. These signs are not meant to incite fear, but rather to prepare us. Just as a dark cloud warns of an impending storm, these signs are believed to be God's way of warning and preparing his people for what's to come. They are reminders to stay vigilant, to keep our eyes on the horizon and to live our lives in expectation and preparedness. However, it's important to note that while many believe the second coming is imminent, no one knows the exact time or date, as it is said in the book of Matthew, but about that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son but only the Father. So, we are left with an intriguing question. Are we living in the end times? The answer lies not in fear but in faith, vigilance and preparedness for whatever may come. Let's recap what we've learned. We've journeyed through ancient prophecies, examined the signs of the times, and delved into the profound mystery of the second coming. Each layer peeled back reveals a deeper understanding, a more profound connection, a closer step to the ultimate truth. The prophecies, those age-old predictions, have been our guide. They've painted a picture of a world in flux, a universe poised for change. They've shown us that the second coming is not a distant event in an uncertain future, but a reality that is unfolding even as we speak. We've looked at the signs of the times, those subtle indicators that whisper of the impending change, the shifting landscapes of our world, the tremors in the fabric of society, and the stirrings in the hearts of individuals, all signaling that something significant is on the horizon. We've explored the second coming, that monumental event that is more than just a religious concept, but a transformative moment in the history of humanity. We've seen that it's not an event to be feared but anticipated with hope and faith. We've discussed the imminence of it all. The second coming is not a far-off event but something that could happen in our lifetimes. The prophecies and signs all point towards its nearness. As we watch the unfolding of world events, remember, the second coming may be closer than we think.